All right, today we're taking a look at Race of Sun version 0.45. The big addition here is the world creator, so let's go ahead and hop on in here. This is going to allow you to create your own levels, including your own objects, your own patterns for those objects, and even your own events for those objects. So let's go ahead and move on into a new, um, a new world here. So let's look at some of the stuff that you can change around here. You know, some pretty basic things. Uh, we can change the sky color if we like. Uh, I would like to make this a more natural looking, actual something you'd find on Earth sky. That looks pretty. Uh, and some of these other things you can mess around with on your own, like max speed and stuff. That's all pretty basic things you can probably figure out. So let's go ahead and look at the objects. I would like to create some objects for us to run into here. Uh, I'm thinking trees. So let's go ahead and add a new tree. So let's call this tree. But you have to create objects one primitive at a time, so let's actually just make the tree trunk at this point. Now we have a cube here, and a cube is a pretty poor tree trunk, so let's go ahead and click on this, and let's just pick this octo. Uh, I call it a cylinder, some people call it an octo. And let's go ahead and change its offset, we'll move it around, its rotation will rotate it obviously, and the scale will we'll stretch it out or smoosh it. So let's uh, stretch it out by three in the Y direction to make it a little bit taller and smush it down uh, by about half in the other dimensions to make it a little bit thinner. So that's, uh, that's a pretty good looking tree trunk right there. Um, we can put on a material of this red color to make it look more like bark. I like that. That's a good looking tree trunk. So let's go back to our objects and you see we now have this one saved automatically and we can add a new one. So let's uh, create a tree tuft here for the top of the tree. Oh man, I can't even spell. Tree tuft. And we will create this. And we're going to change this cube out to be a sphere. And we're going to make this sphere green. That's a pretty good looking tree tuft right there. But we also want to include the tree trunk. So let's add that as a child object. And we just pick it out of the menu here. That's a really funky lunked tree. So let's change the offset on the tree trunk in the y direction to be uh, like negative 40. There we go. So that's a good looking tree right there. Uh, we will need to move the offset of the parent object up by 40 to get it to be above ground. Okay, so that looks perfect. Really, really good. Um, let's go ahead and uh, save this. Now, I like to click save periodically just to make sure I don't lose anything. And let's go ahead and make some of these patterns. So, but this is a procedurally generated game, which means that you don't have a bunch of, you know, set stuff. Instead, what you do is you create a uh, little pattern. So let's go ahead and um, select our tree tuft and build some of the patterns out for the beginning here. So I'm going to put these in a very distinctive pattern. Uh, just a, a bunch of trees right here in the corner. And then I'm going to make a new one and I'm going to put trees in a line over here. So we'll be able to tell these two patterns apart. And we can just hit this test button and we can see uh, as we hop on in here out in the distance you can actually see that first pattern right there. And that pattern is going to repeat again and going to repeat again and again but we will eventually see our other pattern. So there's our vertical pattern. And as we move on to the sides, because this is procedurally generated, you're going to see we don't really have any limits. This just keeps repeating these patterns in a kind of random order. And that's just going to be how our level created. Oops! Looks like we hit that uh, tree trunk, but that's okay. We can move back to our main menu and create some more patterns. So this pattern is kind of dull, so let's actually delete that. I like this one though. Let's make like this tree. Oops. I uh, so, uh, click on this tree trunk instead of the tree tuft. So let's create like a uh, tree corridor here that we can uh, zip down. You know, that'll be a little bit more challenging than what we had before. Let's make another pattern uh, that's like a horizontal wall of trees. And then back here, offset a little bit from there. And uh, let's put some more in here and then kind of leave a gap in the background. And then you can make as many of these patterns as you want. Uh, so we can create like a, an X pattern here. So that'll be kind of challenging to navigate, I think. 
and that's all well and good but let's go ahead and create some of these events because the events are where the game really gets exciting because I want these trees to fall over when we get near them so let's add an event that is a group now a group is just a group of events so that's not even an event in, its, in itself but we're gonna call this group uh, fall over all right and then let's add a another group inside of this group so this will be a subgroup and we're gonna call this left and this will be for things falling over to the left and let's create another subgroup in our first group and let's call this right and as you might guess that's gonna be trees falling over to the right so we have these uh, we have this main group here called fallover that has two subgroups left and right so in this left subgroup we're going to start adding in some uh, events here so the first one we're going to put in is this delay so what is delay going to do well let's click on it and see what we have to offer it's got seconds player distance is less than this or player time to pass is less than so let's make it so that when the player is like two seconds away the event triggers that'd be good and what's the event going to do well let's add in a uh, object rotation a rotate object so let's click on this and we can leave these the same because we want to rotate this object relative to itself and we're going to do this interpolate ease in because that's a pretty nice movement there and we want it to rotate uh, 90 degrees and we want it to finish its rotation of 90 degrees in one second so there you go and we can also add in a uh, sound event to play some audio and what that's going to do is uh, make a, a big boom when it hits that'd be pretty cool now we basically got to do the same thing for our right event so we're going to add in here our delay and inside of this we can go ahead and click on it and we're going to say wait two seconds and then we're going to add in our uh, rotation and on our rotation we're going to change this to negative 90 degrees and with our ease in interpolation of one second making it uh, negative 90 will make it fall the opposite direction as before and we're going to also add in our audio for this so that we get the uh, big boom going all right so those look pretty good now how do we assign these to our objects well we go back to our tree tuft and we want to assign the name uh, fall over dot right and so when we test this you see that the tree falls over to the right and if we do fall over dot left you see it's going to fall over the other way so those look okay but that's kind of a weird animation isn't it so let's take this event out of here and the problem is it's kind of falling over on its uh, center axis rather than the bottom of the tree so what we can do is go back to our objects and add in just a tree object and in this tree object we are going to use this uh, empty placeholder and so it's going to be here and as a child object we are going to add in our tree tuft our tree tuft itself has a child object of the tree trunk so this will just add in the whole thing so we have that there and then what we can do is have this event be the fall over dot right and now when it falls over it looks much more natural so we can make this uh, tree right and then we can go back here and make another one and we'll call this tree left and create this by using our empty object and uh, adding the child object of tree tuft and in here we're going to have it to the fall over dot left uh, okay so we can test that and go back to our objects we have tree right we have tree left let's go look at our patterns here um, these ones are the old trees I mean they look exactly like the other ones but we don't want these so let's delete these to start over and make 
a bunch of tree right. So these ones will fall over to the right and that'll look cool. And then we can make a new layer of tree left and these ones will fall over to the left. You know, maybe a better way of showing this would be to differentiate these so that we can tell when these are going to fall to the left and when they're going to fall to the right. But for right now, I think this will be good for us to test. So let's go ahead and get started here. We've got the two different patterns and we should be able to see which ones are which. So these I think are going to fall to the right and they do. So you can see like we're just like a mighty lumberjack coming through here, chopping down all these trees. And these ones are falling to the left. So that's pretty cool. Now you might want to change the delay when you're playing. Uh, we have a two second delay before the player gets there. We can chop that delay down to like one and a half seconds or maybe just one second if we want to be a little bit uh, more last minute with what's going on here. So let's go and look at these events right, right here and change that up. So change our delay uh, to like 1.5 seconds on one of them and on the other one we'll change our delay to just one second. And now we'll go ahead and test this again. And that shows you just how easy it is to uh, make changes and have events do things. So yeah, that's that's much more exciting because these look like they're going to fall right on us. I like that a lot better. And these ones are all going to fall to that side. So, I mean, obviously you can position these in, in other ways that would make it a little bit trickier for you to see which way they're going to fall and um, make as many patterns as you want and as many objects as you want. This is just a basic introduction and uh, hopefully this was useful for you. In the future, I'll probably do some more advanced techniques, but hopefully this is enough to get you guys started. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video you just watched, and you should know that I have many more just like it here on my channel. I highlight games that follow the five eyes: Indie, innovative, intelligent, inexpensive, and insanely fun. Subscribe now to have a source for finding great games.